years from now, that'll be. Anyways, but no, I'm really looking forward to his first talk. Everyone give it up for Herbert Lee, please. Hi, guys. Uh, so yeah, this is my first um, Peninsula talk, so um, I'm a little nervous. But uh, I wanted to talk about setting up a private PyPI repository. Um, so first off, I guess, what is a PyPI repository? Everyone's probably familiar with the, the official one. Right, um, so we all do pip install, blah 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 blah, blah all the all the things. Um, but so what pip is interacting with is the PyPI repository hosted at um, by the Python package authority. And so there's actually a pep 503 that defines the API for the simple PyPI repository. And if you want to, you can set up your own site that has this that implements this API. And by doing so, various Python packaging tools like pip and other ones that we shouldn't use, um, can interact with it in the same way that they interact with people. Sorry, easy install fans. I'm sorry. Not really. OK. So you can do this, right? Um, but next question is, well, why would you? Why wouldn't you just use the official um, repository for all of your stuff? So there's a couple of two main use cases for this. So the first one is that you need to be able to share you know, closed source Python packages between your team members. Uh, so this was the main reason that I set up one of these uh, for my work. Um, we had various Python packages that we used, uh, and we were using them in various places, like Jupyter Notebooks, or some people were putting them, deploying them uh, to the cloud. And it was, you know, you have two options. One is copying and pasting code, which we don't really want to do. Um, and then the other option was using Git. And so pip uh, can install stuff straight from Git. But this has its own kind of like uh, various problems. So one, you have to set up. It's somewhat problematic if you have this inside of the ICD pipeline. Then you have to have a Git credential in like all of the other pipelines that are trying to read from it. So it, it gets a little bit problematic. Uh, and the other possible reason is maybe you want to mirror some open source packages that you are using from the official PyPI repository. Uh, if any of you guys have heard of the left pad debacle that happened on the JavaScript side of things a little while ago. If for some reason you've got a package on the PyPI repository that you really care about, that you're using a lot, or that one of your dependencies is using, and that maintainer decides, I don't want to have this up there anymore, then maybe your build is going to break, and you may not be able to figure out why for some time. <clears throat> so, yeah. So, the NPM success that you I, I don't know the rules, but I would assume that they probably learned from the left pad the box. Yeah, yeah. So you can't remove your last version. Ah, gotcha. Who knows? All right. So maybe it's not as big of an issue, but um, still, there are some good reasons why you would maybe want to do this. Okay. So here's the kind of the basics of what we got. And um, so I'm using Google Cloud Platform for this, but you don't have to. Uh, all of the technology here, if you it's all got its equivalents on Azure or AWS, whatever you're familiar with. Uh, I just happen to use Google Cloud Platform at work, so I did it on this. So all that I'm doing here is uh, I set up a Google Cloud Storage bucket as the equivalent of Amazon S3s. Um, <coughs> and so if I take a Python package and I upload it to this bucket, it triggers my Google Cloud. <laughs> this is that serverless part of it. Once I've got my cloud function triggered, it will then scan my bucket um, for all Python package distribution files and then put them together into the index file that matches the S3 spec. Uh, uh, the spec is very simple. It's really just an HTML page with links to all of your packages on it. So that's another good reason you might want to take a look at the spec because it's kind of fun to see how all these things sort of work and realize, like, oh, it's just one web page with 10,000 links. Uh, and then the last part, so I'm using Netlify because it was free, um, always a good reason. And uh, once it's there, the, all those HTML files with the various package links then get uploaded there. And then you can point pip to that and it will uh, be able to install packages from it. So next part, let's go to the demo. All right. 
I had to use presentation this year. Um, I'll just stick in the main menu and make it bigger. Okay, so I'm going to start the deployment because it does take a few minutes and it'll give me some time to talk. Uh, oh, first off, so on Netlify, I'm going to first make a site. So I have an empty site here. Let's drag that over. Could have been smart and made a video. <laughs> okay. So I've got my lovely uh, website here, Vigorous Pramagupta. Buttons. I'm doing a bad thing here. Don't put your credentials where everyone can see them, but this is a free account, so you know, do what you want if you can write it down fast enough. All right. Well, that's fun. Uh, apparently, I was running it like 20 minutes ago. Okay, uh, I'll go with the one that was I deployed already then. Uh, oh, except I deleted the site. All right. <laughs> All right, let me go from there. I'll be not called up. Thanks. <laughs> Demo Zaha. I've got all my environments ready. So while that goes, I'll kind of go through the, the script a little bit. So, or I guess through the uh, thing here. So uh, before this, I've set up a bucket here, um, and I've put a single package in here. This is a you know unit test helper package that I wrote for work. Uh, and then I've got a Google Cloud function, so this works like AWS Lambda, um, that then triggers off of that and uh, pushes stuff to whatever um, Netlify uh, site I've been set up. So if I go back here, okay, it's still deploying, so that'll take a few, a little bit longer. Um, so one of the things that, so while this is going on, there are a few things that um, you probably want to do that I did not do for the purpose of this demo. One is there is no auth, so anyone could conceivably then uh, take, you know, if they had the site, they could then install whatever package you had there. Obviously, if you've got private, oh, hey, we're done. Um, obviously, if you've got private packages, this is not a good thing. You should set it up on some other site that's not free um, <laughs> and uh, put some kind of auth. So, unfortunately, the best auth that Pip really like supports fully is basic auth, um, which you know not super great, but also really easy to put into a CI/CD pipeline. So, you know, there's some nice things about it. All right, so I have a couple other versions of this. Uh, package, so let's go ahead and copy that into my bucket. So I had 0.1.0 there. Let's put an older version. <coughs> so I copy that over. We can go see, watch the logs, or just go to Netlify. And It's not that crash point. Probably is. Um, all right. Lesson learned for me. Don't do the try to do the coding live. Um, so I can now change my. This was the last one that I had.
I know there's a faster way to do this on command line, but this is how I do it. So due to whatever crash happened here, um, all right, I will head back to save confines of this investigation. Um, so <laughs> presumably, if this had worked, which uh, it totally did while I was sitting back there, um, what would happen is that you'd be able to specify the extra index URL um, from here, and then it would then uh, be able to pull your packages from it, and it would, uh, actually, let me maybe clarify this, go back up. You'll start with this with index from, at the top right here, and then all the extra on the yes. uh, So that, that's if you have all the dependencies for the additional, for the package that you have there. Um, in this case, I don't have them because I've got them all set up here. But here's the one that I did uh, a few minutes ago. We'll look at that one. <laughs> Uh, so here I set pip install like extra index URL and then with the Netlify um, site that I had set up. So you can see that it's identifying, okay, I've got the uh, file here from GCC fakes and then it's pulled it and then in this case I'm getting the transitive dependencies from uh, the main PyPI. And then it will install it and then uh, we're all good. So for some reason, it didn't work. I'll figure that out in a bit. Um, so as far as how this uh, was set up. Let me go into the script for that. So I'm using a couple different things here. The main one is a library called Frozen Flask. So Frozen Flask is a static site generator that uses Flask as sort of the, uh, the engine. Okay. So. Uh, as I mentioned, we've got sort of like two main things. We've got a, um, so I'm using just the regular Jinja templates. And uh, the first one is just list out all of the packages. And so I've got a link to each package. Um, and then uh, within each package, you then list out all of the different distribution files. So for this case, my packages should be GCC fakes. And then the, uh, within that, within GCC fakes, the index HTML there will list out the various distribution packages. Associated with <coughs> so we take the, so as you can see, I've kind of got what looks like a, a Flask site, the kind of thing you might see in like a um, Flask tutorial type of thing. Um, it produces all of the, the files from there and then attaches the Google Cloud Storage um, path to uh, each of the distribution files, <coughs> uh, takes those files, archives them, and then so as far as the actual template, so the template's very simple. Uh, it really just has, as I mentioned, <coughs> this. It just takes all of the links and then you put a link to each one of them uh, and that's kind of it. All right, so sorry about the failed demo, but uh, that's pretty much the end of what I've got. But I do have some additional um, links here. So as I mentioned, this one is not super great for um, if you want to actually keep your stuff private, you want to add some authentication on top of that. Um, so one option that you do have if you want to actually do this uh, for your workplace is uh, the official PyPI code, um, PyPA warehouse. Uh, you can install it. Um, I believe you need like a Kubernetes cluster or some sort of, um, you can set up locally using Docker Compose. It's pretty heavyweight. It's got a lot of stuff to it. It took me about 30 minutes to clone the repo. Um, but if this is something that, you know, if you want the full power of like the, the official Python package index, you can use that. Um, and then I also have a link to a fun article about the left pad, how that whole thing went down so that you can, you know, understand one of the main reasons why you might want Question. 
we have we have time for one question at least, which is um, I'm gonna steal this out from other people. Have you ever heard of Bandersnatch? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I think the first time someone from Facebook spoke at Peninsula, it was a little while back. Uh, there was a project. Um, which was a lightweight mirror for PyPI packages. Does it still exist? <laughs> Do you still maintain it? Yep. My data is inside. Okay. It has yeah. a full clone, or you can just build it to just pull what you want from um, PyPI. And then there's another one called DevPy, which you can use yeah. to have private private uh, repos, not like yours, but it uses public storage. Just to yeah. Snatch, and you want to use buckets. That was the main thing for me was that I did want to use some kind of like a cloud storage type. Um, solution rather than public storage. Yeah. yeah, that's a cool twist on it, definitely. Yeah. All right. <coughs> well, is there is is there a trouble in there? Yeah, sure. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, did, uh, so, did you try actually hosting the HTML files on the Google Cloud Storage bucket? <coughs> did the authentication mechanism work? Uh, uh, so, trying to hook in like OAuth to pip, I tried it. I did not manage to get it to work. Um, so this is slightly different from what I actually did at work, where I had a, I was using Google App Engine um, to do the authentication and hooking that into like our internal um, authentication server. Um, however, I, you know, the it speed-wise, this is a lot better. Um, one of the issues that I had is that every time you try to scan. Um, or every time you tried to do a, a pip install, it would scan the entire bucket. Um, and so generating the, the index files um, statically when you upload, or you know, you can just set up like a, a cron job to do it every you know, five minutes or so. It's unlikely that people within your workplace are actually uploading packages that frequently. So you know, doing it relatively infrequently is something that you <coughs> work. And then if you're generating the static files, it's lot more, um, you know, most of your, your traffic is going to be on the green side, but it definitely gets you a, a lot of uh, performance boost by doing that. Cool. Uh, thank you again, Harris.